Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Hyper 3D Rodin 1.5. As you all know, I've made a video about this earlier, but they just updated it, and I think uh, text to 3D is really getting there. So in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is generating some props for my Unreal Engine 5 environment. So what I'll do here is use the uh, Rodin and then export a 3D mesh and then we'll import that in Unreal Engine 5 uh, UEFN, doesn't matter, you can import it anywhere. So here's what we're gonna be generating right now. It's pretty much like a golden emblem and I'm gonna be using this as a 3D mesh button for my maps where you can actually go and interact with and whenever you press it, it's gonna show you like a battle reward system where you can unlock things. So I generated this using mid journey and I'll just minimize this here. Now I didn't really mask it out because I'm curious to know how Rodin is going to uh, deal with this. I could mask it out in Photoshop later, uh, but for now I'm just gonna click and drag this here and right here. And I'm just gonna say generate and just like that, I'm just gonna say next right here. This is just telling me the uh, some instructions in here. But just like that, it generated this 3D model. And what's interesting is, if you look on the back, the image is 2D, but it actually gave me kind of like an emblem shield or seal, which is pretty darn insane, right? In a matter of seconds, I was able to generate this. And again, if, if you look at this model right here, the generation is getting pretty darn clean. And this is 1.5 we're talking about right now. This is just, this is just straight crazy. All right, so we have here a golden emblem with wings and shield. So it identified it as such. And what I'll do is I'm pretty happy with this because it, it looks incredible by just doing that. So what I'll do is I will confirm this. So as you can see right here, detailed, sharp, and triangular mesh. So I'm gonna get that. It's not gonna be a smooth one. So we'll confirm and see what that looks like. All right, so here's the actual geometry. Th the thing that's crazy about this is if you pay attention to like 3D generated stuff from text is the depth right here. You're starting to really get into some creases in there. And from a 2D image in what, 10, 12 seconds of generation, this is pretty insane. All right, so the next thing we have to do here is we actually have to generate some materials, right? So the cool thing about this is whenever we export this, I'm gonna get the geometry um, we don't necessarily have to use the material it's going to generate. I can take this into Quixel Mixer and, you know, paint it myself. Although I'm not really like a, a painter. I'm not a texture artist. But if you want to manually paint this yourself, you can absolutely do that. But for a straight newbie, we're just going to say the material generation. I'm just going to say generate. We have PBR temperature here. Uh, it affects the complexity of the detail in PBR. Higher values are closer to the reference image. I'm going to leave everything by default. The only thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this to like maybe eight and I'm just going to say generate right here. And what this is going to do is just try to guesstimate the material for this object right here. Here it is. It generated our material. And what's crazy about this is honestly, I don't know if you've noticed this in the original image, there, there's these little things kind of poking out right here. I honestly thought that it was going to ignore that. It was just going to grab this triangle. But if you look, it's actually capturing that, which is so thin, but it got that detail. I mean, those little things, I mean, those, those might not make a lot of difference, but that's what I'm kind of looking for whenever I'm like using these tools. They're really getting getting better by the minute well it's gonna go ahead and confirm this for now pretty cool looking thing this is more like stylized which is kind of cool all right so now that we're happy with the actual material generation i will go ahead and export this as an obj i'm gonna set this to 4k even though the fortnite limit is 2048 
I'm going to down res this so we can get a little bit more quality. It's always better to down res than to up res whenever you're doing anything. So yeah, let's go ahead and download it. And this is going to be generating and we'll just wait for it. All right, so now we have this already zipped up and it actually already popped up, which is good. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be generating is kind of like an Easter egg item that I'm gonna be putting in my Fortnite map. Now, for this one, we're not gonna be using an image. I'm gonna be using the text to 3D model uh, inside Hyper 3D wrote in, all right? The old rusty bald doll. Yes! Oh, it actually looks pretty good. Mm, let's see. Okay, let me generate this one because that one looks really creepy. All right, so here we are in Unreal Engine 5 for Fortnite. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with it, it's just how you make um, Fortnite maps or whatever. So basically what we'll do is we're going to import two of the assets that we generated using Rodin. We have the emblem and we have the dolls. I have the two assets already unzipped here. We have the PBR. This is going to be the emblem. So I will just rename it to emblems. All right. And I will just drag and drop it inside our emblems folder here. And as you can see, we have the PBR textures already in that folder as well. Now it is an OBJ. That's okay. Unreal Engine takes OBJs. So that's fine. And here it is. I will double click this now just to load it up. And here is our emblem. <laughs> Pretty incredible stuff. I mean, this looks like it's freaking modeled, which is insane. So here we go. We will drop our textures normal and we have roughness. I'll just drop, drop all that off and I'll just kind of tweak it. So in the texture diffuse, I'll just create a new material. Emblems, matte. I like to add z in here because sometimes uefn gets really weird with like file naming so i just tend to like create unique words because especially with verse sometimes it just doesn't like certain words so i'll plug in my metallic here and you know this is not like super advanced we're just plugging in textures and apply and we'll double click our static mesh here and drop our actual material onto that static mesh and as you can see here it is it's actually giving a little bit of um glow i mean gloss if you think it's kind of like shiny right because the metallic texture is there now obviously if you want to tweak it a little bit more you can but what i'm going to do now is apply this to a button that allows players to actually open up their battle reward system pretty much like free gear the more you level up uh the more gear you're gonna get like weapons and things so to do that in unreal engine for fortnite i'll just go to the button this is a simple button and it actually allows you to customize a mesh i can drag and drop this in here and just like that i'll snap this here we replace that button mesh with the emblem that we generated using Rodin, which again is super freaking cool. And again, we'll talk about the handles in the back because I the, the, remember the thing that we imported was is a picture, but it's got that little shield handle, which is super dope. And just like that, we have this awesome looking 3D model from that picture. And that's it. That's pretty much it. And next, what we'll do is the dolls. So like I mentioned earlier, for the dolls part, I actually want this to be kind of like a collectible for the players. So kind of like Easter egg. So again, we're just going to import it here. Now, there's multiple ways on how you can do a collectible in Fortnite, but I'm just going to do like a collectible object. So we have this thing right here. Now, I'm doing it this way because Fortnite players don't really like to look hard. So they want kind of everything just laid out. And similarly to custom mesh for the button, I can just scroll down here and click on custom mesh. 
and I can replace this with a doll. And, you know, we can have it laying down. That's cool. Kind of like extra creepy. Like so. Now let's make sure that it's kind of like touching the table there. I'll remove my snap here so my rotation is not... Both of them are going to be on, custom mesh, and the collider here, we can set it manually. So if I go to collider, I can actually move it a little bit so that, you know, when it gets picked up, it's not way over here on the left. It's actually on the right. It's very important. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. And I can actually untick the play ambient VFX here as well. So that means that we now have this creepy little doll in this game, which again fits this post-apocalyptic kind of environment that I have in my map. That's pretty much it for this video. I mean, I still like working with people, but whenever I need something quick and something very specific that I can't find in the marketplace, I tend to go to Rodin and generate static meshes out of text or images similar to how you just saw it right here because finding an emblem star is not very common right my vision is like i want this and for me to like find somebody to do that's going to take a lot longer so i just went to the website generated it imported it and that's pretty much it which is pretty darn cool